And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. What I'm not going to edit out, though, is my hardline stance on Gina Carano. You talk about real talk with Rogue One. You're about to get real talk with a human holocron in a second, dude. Let me I tell mean, you. I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm about to air my grievances right now. This bitch had the audacity yeah. to be your, like. Your general oh, grievances. Yeah, like my this. general grievances. That's really good. <laughs> du- That's double really entendre. Good. Don't ask me how. I, I won't. I won't. <laughs> Uh, because I, I get it. I got it. Um, <laughs> she had the audacity to be like, yo, I'm going to sue you. Let me at you on Twitter real quick. I'm going to sue you. But then I'm also at the end of my rant about me suing you. Going to ask for my job back. Go. Oh, she's trying, to, she's trying to sue Lucas Films. <laughs> yeah. For wrongful termination. Was this like, did we speak this into existence? Did we, this, did you did. Recently? You spoke it into existence. <laughs> this is your fault. No, but like, I, you didn't Whoops. actually. I'm not, I'm not actually mad at you, but like, fuck her, dude. I honestly, like, I'm sorry. She I mean, look, I'm essentially mocked the entire trans community. And in, in my book, it's like, go fuck yourself. Like, there's a reason you were yeah. let go or not brought back. Um, and don't act like you were like discriminated against because you were discriminating against other people essentially did did she did she try to take the freedom of speech stance oh yeah <laughs> is that what uh, it's well cataloged yuck. i don't know she fucking yeah. sucks i meant like what? this and, most recent wrongful termination oh, no. uh verb uh wish. well yeah i guess that's what she's saying like ultimately the whole <laughs> thing was a freedom of speech thing because she was like anti-vax during covid which was also like uh maybe you know maybe don't take that stance <laughs> yeah uh, like, it's, but one, the... it's one thing to it's one thing to not want to get the vax i feel like comfortably we could speak on these things now because we're so far removed from covid even though i know it's still like a thing ish kind of yes i'm <laughs> this isn't where you come for your political takes but i was just gonna say uh in terms of like the anti-vaxxers like just don't get the vax like why speak on other people's like what their preference is like i never yeah. i never really understood that and we, we don't mean about to turn this into a, a vax conversation but i was just like yeah it doesn't like, need to be it, just don't get it and let me tell you how <laughs> the, you most you? of the general population yeah. is probably going to handle it they got the first couple so that they could return to normal life mm-hmm. And they'll, they might get the next couple, and then they'll probably treat it like the flu and not get any of them like I do. So <laughs> I'm not saying that, like, yeah. everyone's are yeah. on that boat, but, like, I haven't gotten the flu vaccine. I don't know how long. I'm not out going to go out there and say that it flat out doesn't work, though. <laughs> it's just, it's oh, just yeah, right. bonkers well, I thinking. Mean, I, can, I can irresponsibly say that I haven't gotten a flu shot in many a moon. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Well, my kids have. I got. I've gotten my kids flu shots. But yeah, hey, I mean, good on you for being a, a good dad. You know, <laughs> I, I also knock on wood. Don't get sick very often. So hopefully, I continue that trend. It's like I usually get got like once a year. Yeah. Uh, you just get one really from bad one of sickness. My ass kids. <laughs> yeah, I usually get like one really bad cold, and I'm down for like a couple of days, and then I'm good. That's my quota for the year. I, I love how you said uh, Jeremy ass kids because it sounded kind of like Jeremy, and now he is a kid. So shout uh, out sh- to Jeremy's kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go. Anyways, anyways, you are listening anyways. to anyways. Annie, are you okay? A Star Wars podcast. Boy, boy, let me tell you what a what a terrible time. Oh, no, for I can't our hear you. Audio to cut out on my end. <laughs> oh, now I can. Now I can hear you. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, we lost it. We lost it there for a little. I'm, I might leave that in because that might hopefully be funny. But anyway, anyways, you're listening to Annie. Are you okay? A Star Wars <laughs> anyways, podcast. Again. 
you are I am Mikey, That's one of your hosts. <laughs> AKA the human holocron. AKA Darth Plagueis the Wise. Darth Plagueis the Wise himself. You gotta do the And voice. I'm here joined <laughs> with my guy. The rogue one. The rogue only. Matthew Porter, how you doing? I'm checked in, baby. I'm checked I know in. you're checked in. You're always checked in. I, I threw my, my ones right up there. like they could see me. Like they could see the ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are here today to uh, talk about um, a different topic than you're used to. But before we do so, I just wanted to let you know uh, that we are, in addition to me talking shit on Gina Carano, we are also going to be coming to you with coverage of The Bad Batch Season 3 every episode as they come out. If they're coming out in batches, then we'll cover them in batches. So That's how we're going to do it. In, in um, bad batches. In bad batches. We're some bad bitches covering some bad batches, and you can listen you to go. all of our not safe for work takes on Annie Ryoke. Here. Uh, today, A Star however... Wars podcast. Um, we are going to do our thing, and we're you know fresh off the win for best score for a video game. <laughs> Shoutouts to Jedi Survivor receiving its praise provoked a thought by me. What are some of our favorite musical moments outside the Skywalker saga films that have made a lasting impact on our viewing experience? In my mind, I was thinking. Disney era, I guess, like not Rise of, or anything maybe post Rise of Skywalker. I know the Mandalorian came out like before the Rise of Skywalker, but I'm willing to yeah. throw the Mandalorian in there too. <laughs> um, and yeah, I got a few listed out here. Some lead into the others, but I figured I would I would let it hand it off to you first to give me you know something that has touched you to your core from a musical I standpoint, you. Matt. I, I, I do like my core touched. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I, I do like the distinguishment of you saying, you know, let's try to avoid, you know, Skywalker music because we could have just got stuck there. and just. Oh, you know, we would have. Ab- we could do a whole three or four episodes <laughs> on that. Probably. We could All actually John, probably do John nine. And pick us. Yeah, exactly. We could do one for each movie, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Gotcha. So I, I, I must say I was I was a bit cheeky with some of these because I, I did stick to your rule but i found some uh, workarounds for two of my choices that's okay so i'm gonna go since since uh fallen order <clears throat> or jedi jedi survivor got the award for the soundtrack i'm gonna stick with the same theme of its predecessor predecessor is the one before right correct what's the what's the after what's the after is there is there a word for a, a after sister <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we'll find, we'll find out chat, after the guys. podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put, it, put it in the chat, <laughs> right, guys. If you know, put it put it put it in the comments below. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so sticking sticking along with the theme of the uh, of the video game, a shout out to our guy Cal Custis. I picked for my first choice the flashback scene from Fallen Order where they use the Order 66 theme when Cal's like going through the pipes oh, and all the stormtroopers okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. are like cashing in. Cause uh, that, that, that music, that score, you know, like when Yoda like falls over and Kashyyyk and is mm-hmm. clutching his pearls cause he feels the purrs happening and all that. He drops it's his just cane. so, so strong. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, when when uh, when Obi-Wan and his little uh, lizard gecko thing gets blasted and it's making the th- the boga. Noise. I know exactly. Like just that, uh, I, I know exactly what you said. Uh, I can't do it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that 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 theme, that uh, Order sixty six theme, I love how they uh, hit the nostalgia chord and brought that back in Fallen Order because it had been many a moon since I had seen that outside of watching my million rewatches of Revenge of the Sith, but just uh, connecting that scene in the video game with that music from the movie. Like even though I knew the game was canon. It like just solidify like oh shit this happened in the universe it's not just a fun game to play yeah and it's it's crazy how um you know we've seen order 66 so many times and i feel like that theme is recurring and yeah it was john williams mm-hmm. writing and he, he absolutely killed it um but the way it's been implemented since then uh still strikes yeah. to your very the planet core if you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> big facts big big facts uh, yeah, I, I will. I do love, uh, I do love the fact here that, with, you know, with mine. If you don't kinda, mind, unless you wanted to kind of like the blip. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I just really liked your point about uh, how that theme keeps getting repurposed in different, you know, lore in Star Wars. I believe it might have showed up in that episode with Ahsoka, like the, the Clone Wars uh, final yes, season mm-hmm. when she had that moment for like... Yeah, so I was like, I like how they just kind of keep uh, repurposing. It's like it's like the it's like the blip in the MCU. Like that's just Order sixty six just keeps we get, keep getting uh, new new layers. Order sixty six is like, like an the onion. canon event, you know? right? <laughs> yeah, facts, <laughs> big big facts. Big, big facts. But uh, the floor is yours, brother. What's what's your first one? Staying in Jedi Fallen Order territory. Um, this was something that I, I thought was really cool. The first time they really did this in Star Wars, in my opinion, um, they brought like a new genre of music into Star Wars, and that's the band The Who doing Sugin Hasa or Sugin Asana is the throat singing like yeah, like yeah, that yeah. thing. That shit, uh, that moment when you're fighting against, like, all of the bounty hunters in that, like, arena or the... Mm -hmm. I think they drop a few monsters in. That, to me, was just like, oh, we're entering, like, a new fucking era of Star Wars storytelling. Like, they were willing to break the mold and do something very different um, with that. And I feel like it started this kind of, like, avalanche of new and different Star Wars, like, music being implemented because we... Uh, this is this is my my point was it kind of like led into another one but this directly had to have inspired uh Igyaka by the Illuminati Hotties what a band name um it's Sabine's <laughs> intro great, song great in Ahsoka name. yeah <laughs> um that intro for Sabine hits so much harder but it's so in character that like punk rock Star Wars music something I never really thought I'd hear but I'm like it's the genre that I fuck with in real life and uh, now in my escapism as well so I was super pumped to kind of like see different genres of music get that highlight and i was very happy um that we got it in ahsoka and it really you know got to get a lot of credit to the fallen order team for being willing to expand what we know as star wars music and bring more genres into the fold word i like that one that was a good because i mean what you kind of said kind of perfectly tease up uh, one of my next ones. We're kind of jumping around here on my list, but uh, very much in spirit of like what you were saying, like that felt like uh, a, a musical awakening from the Star Wars universe. Because you know, this with the Skywalker saga, you know, the prequels, <clears throat> the you know, the originals and the sequel trilogy. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of flutes, a lot of violins, a lot of horns. You know, they they have a wheelhouse, a comfort zone, and they stick to it, and it's it's beautiful every time. But uh. In the spirit of new sounds that entered the Star Wars universe that I was very excited about, uh, though his appearances were limited, boy was his score catchy, but all the scenes that Thundercat was in, in a book yes. of Boba Fett, where they had, yes. where it was clearly his style of music, and I would imagine oh, yeah. that he probably had a hand in producing uh, the score that would take place for his scenes, but just having like that... Uh, funkadelic psych type music that we're, we're, we're accustomed to just kind of in regular life from Thundercat having that implemented in Star Wars with the you know the Vespa Rangers and everything I was like this is awesome look look, look at look at the genre Dude, expansion in Star that, Wars that is super sick F- first off shout out to fucking Thundercat that's that's just amazing I'm so glad that he got to put like a stamp on his like not that not everyone is like so big that their personality bleeds into their Star Wars character yeah. But I'm really glad that <laughs> his did. Um, and it, it really definitely shaped... It didn't just shape his character. It it did, like you said, the whole Vespa Ranger crew. Like That was impactful for more than just his character. Um, and not to mention, we get a really cool montage seeing one of our favorites, Fennec Shand, come back to life um, yes. <laughs> to to that score itself. Um, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to hijack your, your point here, but this one wasn't on my list. Uh no, no, but I, I believe it's Ludwig Gorenson who did the like dubstep Dark Trooper theme from Mando season two. And oh, that's another, oh like, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah, another area of like electronica that, a- that I was like, oh fuck, this really works for me. Um, and it, and with the Dark Shit, Troopers, well, I mean, go the, ahead. Fuck, uh, that's that that cues up another one that's not on my list but kind of goes right along with uh i don't know if ludwig does it but that same episode uh 
Luke's return music where it's like very grungy and like had like very guitar bass and everything. Mm-hmm. We won't get a lot of guitar in Star Wars. I'm not even no, sure if that was not. a guitar, but it sounded like it, one. No, it definitely <laughs> was one. Like you can hear it like All the right, wonderful. <laughs> it's a, a wall, just like the chords like strumming like um back and forth leading into the force theme. Like and there's like yeah. He, yeah. Who, they somehow captured the mysticism in some of like the woodwinds that they like add in where it's like the da, 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 da. <laughs> like like as he's going through mowing down like all these uh troopers but you have grogu looking at him on the screen with all these like oh like these giant wide eyes of wonderment just like we are as the viewers being like what yeah. the fuck is it, Luke? Who is it? like i remember when <laughs> yeah when we were first were watching we were like it's gotta be but is it and it's like <laughs> Uh, Mark so Hamill's exciting. so old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, too. I love yeah, how we was, just like added in two that weren't even on our list, like right in there. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, new seamless, ways to get the force seamless. theme inject them into my veins, please. <laughs> big big facts, big big facts. So so you gave me your bonus one. What what's your actual next one? So my actual next one. Um, is the end credits from Ahsoka by Kevin Kiner that merges Ahsoka's theme, Sabine's theme, and Hera's theme while making it more epic than ever before. Um, I think I I must have raved about it multiple times. There There were times where I was just like, I'll be in my car and I'll just throw it on just to listen to it as I'm driving around because I'm like this, that theme just hits heavy, uh, in so many ways. I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, chugging right along, because you know what? I was going to put the Ahsoka one on my list, but I felt like you were going to put it on your list. So I did it. So, you know me well, (laughs) uh, you know, I do. I do. I say all the time, you know, the easiest place to start is the beginning. So in spirit of your theme song. I chose a twofer, but it's for one for because it's made by the same person. Ludwig's theme for The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. Them, them's is just some iconic opening oh. themes. Like much, much like you with the Sokas ending theme, I have uh, The Mandalorian opening song just on my phone, you know, and I just Yo, sometimes bust it. It's that, so and the theme, good. that and the theme from Westworld. I bust those out sometimes. It's like, you know, that's great. That's it. great. No, no, no. Sometimes the fucking the music just hits different. Like, and uh, I, Mando's theme is fantastic, and I love the evolution so of good, the Boba man. Fett intro to its final outro, where they start chanting Boba Fett yeah. instead of whatever they were chanting before. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Ludwig absolutely fucking crushed both of those, and I love that you take this instrument that everyone like learns how to play in like third grade and make it like the focal yeah. point of this super badass Man. character. He's like, he made that shit on a fucking recorder and then added all this stuff. So to it. That's good, amazing. Bro. Yeah. And, um, it, and it, it definitely, song, the, especially the, the Mandalorian one specifically, that song is just so layered, bro. Boba Fett John just hits you hard. It just comes in and punches you in the mouth. Oh, yeah. you're just like, Oh shit. Like, 100%. But like Mando, you get the recorder, <laughs> And then, and then the dum dum hits, and he's like, "Oh shit! <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> like, is that a cowbell? I don't know. Like what the? What's that oh my god! In the back. I love it. <laughs> so I, you feel like um, you could like walk your dog to that and feel like you're dum-dum. traversing an entire like galaxy. <laughs> Don't let there be a don't let there be a cool breeze going on. I can I'm listening to that. <laughs> feel like I'm tre- tre- feel like I'm treaching through Hoth. Put my hood up. <laughs> <Dum-dum>. <laughs> oh man, what a good time! I I also think that like Great. if you're listening to the Boba Fett theme song and you don't want to get in a circle and start dancing around with people shoving spears in their face, I don't I don't know. How can you not? Yeah, I feel like I feel like you have to bust out like a ceremonial pipe and just smoke it with friends. Like when that's hundred percent. That's what I feel like. Yeah, you bring out your inner Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. You smoke too much, Pippin. <laughs> All right, I I have. What's your, what's your this is my though? the final one on my list. Um, okay. Kevin Kiner again, uh, but this theme in particular, and I don't have its name, but um, 
there were a lot of fun themes that he used throughout the Bad Batch uh, in season two. Much more, you know, I think they explored a lot of different things um, in season two as opposed to season one. Season one still had some great music, but one that really stuck with me, uh, and it's to me the best part of the Kashyyyk episode, the one where they bring Gungi back to um, his tribe on Kashyyyk or like oh, help him trees, try to find his save, tribe. To save the yeah. trees. Yeah, to save the trees. Um, there is this somber, ethereal, just like a droning Ooh, sadness in in that music. And it, like every time I, I just get sad when I listen to it. And I, I who doesn't like a sad song, honestly? Um, but at the same time, That's facts. there's a lot of emotion with, with no words to be able to convey kind of like all of the sadness of the Wookiee people being you know imperialized by the empire is it's just like it hits heavy and like knowing some of the extra lore i think helps but it's certainly something that you know had a lot of gravity to it and i you know look forward to seeing what he does in season three because uh that's not the only thing he knocked out of the park but that was just the one that i think like really stood out to me from the season that uh hit me hard uh there's quite a few other that others that hit me hard as well but he he fucking he was i don't know if it was because kevin kiner does it with his family like his um sons are also composers as well so i don't know if it's who was responsible for that one but they killed it and um the creativity in that family just continues to fuel (laughs) the star wars uh from a musical standpoint um they've certainly earned their role uh as composers do you have another one on your list matt or um is there i do you do hit me with it i do i do i do have another one so this one's not on my list but i just want to mention it uh just because it was a whole musical episode so uh we didn't like it in the visions lineup but tattooing rhapsody i still feel like was just a cool concept you know just having Mm -hmm. rock and rollers in a galaxy far far away again we don't get a lot of guitar in star wars so that was very exciting just to get it even though again it's not one of my favorite visions but uh I got a little, I got a little sneaky, a little cheeky with my, with my last one again, because it is another one that is technically, not technically, it is part of the, the Star Wars, the Skywalker saga, but the revelation of why this song was so epic did not come to light until a couple of years ago when eagle eyed super star wars fans peeped some similarities between this theme and another theme that is very legendary in star wars lore so for my final choice i'm choosing the fact that the naboo celebration music at the end of phantom menace is just is the inverse of the imperial march yes (laughs) 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 yep (laughs) yes so uh that revelation coming out that you know even though it was a very jovial happy moment everybody celebrating she front and center with the magical blue ball you know and it was just uh still a sign in hindsight that he was pulling the strings all along because it was just a happier version of his theme and i thought uh that being that coming out that not being known for so long and coming out like a couple years ago or whenever it was was just like oh shit they really be cooking over there so that was a, a awesome moment to experience as a fan yeah um i can't believe that we like Star Wars fans collectively like didn't put it together and if they did put it together and <laughs> just didn't share it with the world I'm a little upset but I think it was uh, New Rockstars who Self- had, was the first <laughs> yeah New Rockstars was the first uh, people to point that out um, to me I guess yeah, they may accurate. have been um, late to the party on that but I, I I don't know it's just one of those things where the revelation of it I definitely definitely rocked my world uh, there's a very few Star Wars like theories or things that like that have completely changed my perspective um, on the scenes that, itself. that was definitely one like of the them. Uh, to go off on a tangent like we do the high ground theory where Obi-Wan tells Anakin not to try it because the most uh, prominent moment in his life was when he took advantage over Maul and so he relived it constantly in his life to know yeah. exactly what move he needed to make in order to defeat Anakin. How I didn't realize that as a younger fellow, yeah. uh, I don't know. But it's something that I always think about every time I watch the movie now. <laughs> yeah, and even even that theory on like the other side of it, because you would uh, you would imagine, you know, their their relationship. Like I said, again, it like they 
creatively they 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 abandoned the father son relationship and made it brothers which it probably always should have been that way anyway yeah but you you had to imagine you know their one upsmanship that they have obi's probably told that story a million times and anakin's in his head you know cocky and arrogant he's like well i'm better than you if you can pull that off i can definitely pull that move off oh yeah and like you just oh, said yeah. Obi Wan having you know invented it. He's like, no, don't try it. Like I'm trying to tell you, you know, you know, it's another uh, that same setting but different. I love how in um, Rebels, the Obi Wan episode, how he kills Maul by doing the move by stopping the move that got Qui Gon, like the uh, the the yep, jab yep. to the face, and then the I like how Obi Wan you know switched his stance and like people like pointed that out you know he was doing the stance that Qui Gon did but then switched it and was able to counter the move because he had seen it done before and I, I like that a lot with those types of things where it's like a little wink and a nod to the eagle eyed fan that they that they don't even come out and say it's just like we're just gonna leave this here so somebody figures it out <laughs> right type of it's a, it's such so. a care for the uh, story and the characters um, to be so visually rep like representative of all these things like i know it's like memed to death now but where george looks like oh you know it's, uh, it's like it rhymes um like just comparing all of the things and how like history repeats itself but like yeah. it's done in such a tasteful way in star wars that it just makes me and i don't think they've ever done it in a way that ever like pisses me off i always am like i appreciate both of these moments more now because of this <laughs> so that we 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 might have to put a pin in that because I, I would like to like do that as an episode because Sc- Star Wars they're really good at the callback like yeah. they're really good kind of like what you're just saying like it doesn't feel fan servicey even though it is it doesn't feel repetitious it doesn't feel like oh that's lazy of course you go back to that like you like give us some new shit like they're they're really good at subtle callbacks and you know certain gestures like with uh like in the rise of skywalker even though again not my favorite but just you know um when ben is about to fight the knights of ren that we know nothing about and he does yep, the little yep. like you know the han solo like, things like that yeah, yeah 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 does the shrug like like star wars is really good at like again like the nostalgia pop like oh hey let's but like I said, they don't throw like you just said. They don't throw it in your face, and it's always really well done. I feel like that would be a, good, a cool episode, like our favorite uh, re-reference callbacks. Or, yeah, or, that, yeah. yeah or, um, <laughs> we'll we'll definitely put a pin in that and, and cover it when we have time. I know there's a lot of Bad Batch coverage. Maybe we'll get it in right before Bad Batch starts. We'll have to we'll have to come up with a few yeah, of those things. Um, but I, I love it. Um, it's definitely something that we could come up with a lot of answers for, and hopefully, if you're listening, you can look forward to them next week on Annie Are We Okay? Before we, we close this thing out, I do have a question for you. And ask me anything, if you will. I'm not going to play the sounder. Shit. I'm not going to play the sounder. <laughs> but I do have a question for you. We all business. Um, you know, we were talking about all of these different musical scores that have touched us, you know, recently with Star Wars. Uh, but I got to ask, is there any composer that you want to get their hands on Star Wars that hasn't yet? I don't know if they haven't, because if they had, I just don't know that their names attached to it. But if you have not, Hans Zimmer, get your ass. Yeah, that was mine. That was my number one. (laughs) I would really, (laughs) really, really (laughs) like him to be composing something Star Wars related. Um, <laughs> he said, Christopher, I've done it again. <laughs> I've done it <laughs> again. video you said. <laughs> yeah, fucking Interstellar, John. Oh, oh, Hans, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I would, because, uh, you know, I would say uh, Michael G. Gene, I can never say his name right. Michael Giacchino, I think, is how you say it. I probably mm. butchered that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he has Sounds touched like it you. because the original composer for Rogue One had to step away and he came in to finish slash rearrange a few things. Um, so he has That's had cool. his hand on, on a few things, but uh, you know, welcome him back. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Hans Zimmer was like the top of my list for that. I just think that like uh, his themes for his movies are just so well done. Um, oh, you know, Oh, fucking wait a minute. You know, it would be fire. Like if they do, a Lando movie or like a standalone or a movie or whatever 
I feel like it'd be dope if like Quincy Jones like handled the score for that. Like I feel like that, that would be really cool. Like, like Billy D. Williams and Quincy Jones just always have felt like birds of a feather to me, and I feel like he would just get that <laughs> vibe, you know, like space space suave. <laughs> Dude, it, it's well, fun. I'm not saying that he the the vibe wouldn't match, it definitely would, but um, I feel like uh he would go with Ludwig because uh, Donald Glover introduced Ludwig to Favreau, oh, yeah, yeah, and that's how he yeah. got the job. Yeah, so I would I would like um, Ludwig to get like uh more than just a theme song. Let him just kind of score out some shit. Oh, if he's not composing the movie, I'd be fucking pissed, honestly. Ooh, like you don't good, do that shit without him. I, th- I think that like he deserves that. I mean, he's a fucking Oscar winning composer for. I think he won for the Black Panther, did he not? Um, uh, that sounds about right. But yeah, like Quincy Quincy Jones or like Pharrell, like for like a, a yeah a Lando show. Like with, oh with, yeah, there's with, definitely there's like there's tones that we haven't quite hit. Like talking about introducing new genres into yeah. Star Wars. Like yeah, there's definitely elements. Um, of composers that like that would be awesome lando has a like you said a suaveness to him that deserves um you know breaking new ground and as a star wars character and it, it from what i've heard in interviews recently don glover has gone on record saying that he wanted total control of the narrative and that's why it's been mm-hmm. taking so long because there have been a lot of back and forths but i think lucasfilm just realized like we can't take one of the greatest creative minds that's on the planet right now and tell him no. Right. If he's going to put handcuffs on him. (laughs) Right. We can't put handcuffs on him. As long as he respects the story, which he will, I don't think he has any intentions of fucking rewriting canon. I think he has intentions of telling the best possible Lando story he can tell. So I'm excited for what it's him and his brother writing it. Uh, it sounds like it's a movie now instead of a series, so I'm I'm about it. And 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 Donald Glover is an admitted nerd, so it's not like you oh, know, yeah. somebody who just like out out here just like oh you don't even know like you don't respect the IP like you would definitely like you know pay. pay he homage. said I'm a beast, bitch, gur invaders him. He knows invaders him. <laughs> 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 Look, that, we know it, it, right if you know invaders in then he definitely know about the galaxy far far away <laughs> he, also, you know you know also <laughs> he, another under you know what he know you know totally <laughs> underrated um childish gambino line but when he's like she on my back about it c3po <laughs> that shit is fucking perfect <laughs> Yes, that is a bar. <laughs> that is a bar. See, just give him, just just give him control. He got, he got it, he got it. I will. He I hits will the callback say, in that song too, and he goes, "I will say, dressed up in gold, C three PO." <laughs> yeah, I I will say the one thing that I wouldn't necessarily knock Disney for being like apprehensive about is like. When Donald does get in like his super like third eye open bag, it can get a little weird. Like that show Swarm, like that show is crazy. <laughs> so I have heard like, that it's actually I've seen see, clips from it, and I'm like, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 a it's a wild show. It's not bad, but it's a wild show. But I could see like Star Wars being scared that they'd get something like that. But I feel like he knows when to like intentionally be outside the box and i don't think he would do that with star wars i feel like he like has too much respect for the property to be like all right let me go full third eye open fifth dimensional thinking 3d chess with this i feel like he would uh keep it grounded in star wars lore just put some swag on it i think It'd be you good. make a really good point and she's part of the being shit, calculated man. about when he does that i feel like he can do it with aliens <laughs> that that scene I feel like will live in infamy forever. <laughs> but um I feel like he could he could definitely do something with more like, than the movie. The more set than the movie pieces itself, that scene. could be <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> I don't even like on solo that much and I like that movie. Um <laughs> Oh man. Well, Matt, uh, we have been <laughs> lagging back and forth to each That's other. Such a bad line. For it is a bad line. Um, we've been lagging back and forth to each other for the last thirty-five minutes. So, but somehow <laughs> let's we close got this one it. out and see if. <laughs> yeah, let's let's close this one out and see if we somehow have a, an, a, an episode that we can publish. 
you know, I have faith because I feel like we both noticed early on that there was a lag and we compensated oh, yeah. for it. <laughs> if it matches up, I'm never going to let anyone tell me that we're not professionals. <laughs> Look, bro, that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> hey, man. I have been Mikey, a.k.a. the Human Holocron, a.k.a. Darth Plagueis the Wise. And I've been joined Darth by Plagueis Rogue the One. Wise. Matthew Obi Wan Kenobi, Mace Windude, <laughs> your main main of the Gray Hoodie Gang, <laughs> all the aliases, <laughs> all the aliases, and you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Annie, the letters A N I R U O K Pod, on Instagram, Twitter, like I said, and you can find us at our sister podcast, Dragon Ball for Life. That is Dragon Ball, the number four life oh, on Facebook, life. And db4l underscore pod on Instagram and Twitter. Matt and Trav do lots of fun things over there, talking all things anime and manga. Specifically, lately, uh, new Dragon Ball content, such as chapter reviews and, and new shit. Trailers. New shit. <laughs> but Matt, take us home, buddy. All right, Animaniacs. You know, it could be it could be John Williams. It could be John Legend. It could be Hans Zimmer. It could be Hagen Das. You know, it could be it could be Charles first name Ray. Life can be a beach, but as long as there's no sand, you guessed it. And you gonna be okay. Be okay. May the force be with you. And with you. Later, nerds. Deuces. We out.